are not prepared. Welcome to Nerd Dog Fire with Crystal Five, guys. The new season has started, and soon we should be hearing about new nerds for next week. But until then, let's look at what are the best performing decks with which you could be climbing some easy ranks. I will show you five of the best performing decks right now, but also what are all of the other working archetypes as well. So stick around to the end. If you enjoy videos like this, drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And also, don't forget you can hire me for some Hearthstone coaching. Before we get into the decks, I will do something I've actually never done before on the channel. Review a product. BenQ was cool enough to send me their screen bar halo monitor lamp, and I gotta say, this thing feels amazing. The first impression I got when I opened it up is how good the quality of the packaging actually was, and the screen bar itself feels also as amazing. The screen bar is made out of this solid metal with powdered finish, and it has some weight to it too, and the build quality feels really top notch. It also comes with an extra adapter for curved monitors, so you don't have to worry about how you want to be mounting it on those. What the screen bar Halo provides is a convenient way for you to light up your desk space without having to turn on the lamp or having a table lamp on your desk to clutter it. It doesn't throw any glare on your monitor and you can adjust the light to be warm and cozy or white and sharp, depending on what you prefer. You can control the light with this cool wireless remote and this thing also feels super premium and slick. It has a touch screen and with this metal ring you can adjust brightness and light temperature. The screen bar also has a backlight which helps reduce eyesore and stress during your late hours so you don't have to be staring at a bright monitor. With this I can imagine working with documents or instruments when it's dark would also be a breeze, but also it helps you have less stress on your eyes while you do your gaming as well. Anyway, if you want to check out this product, you can get the Amazon link in the description, but now let's get into the decks. Like I said, we should be getting some nerfs really soon, so be careful crafting anything if you're short on dust, but still, let's see what the best performers are for now. Gonna start off with Miracle Rogue, which is one of the best decks out there, and is actually the only deck we have stats for for Top 1000 Legend because it's so good there. The deck is super high rolly, and you can get some amazing wins, especially if you know what you're doing with it. Your main win condition is still your Gravestones, your Edwin, and your Necrolord Draka. And obviously you can have some crazy early game tempo with your Wild Pog Gnolls as well. This list is going back to basics with only one copy of Sinister Strike, which used to be Yoink in the last list. But yeah, it basically seems like Sinister Strike is still pretty pretty awesome too. Matchup wise, most priests are not gonna be fun for you, Pure Paladin if you manage to find it as well, and also Mind Rogue might be too quick. Mages can be 50-50, and also Control Warrior is not gonna be great, but everything else is awesome. Mulligan wise, going first, you want your Shroud of Consumement, Edwin can be great, your Blackwater Cutlass is always gonna be a keep, Location is usually not a bad idea, and also Wild Fog Null and SI Extortion. Depending on the matchup you might decide Draka is gonna be your win condition let's say against a possible spooky mage, because they will be freezing your board over and over again. But all in all, this is generally what it looks like when you're going first. Just be careful not to keep too many minions when you also have Shroud already, cause you only have 5 minions in total in the deck. One on the coin, again the tradable and the location, and also Shroud and Edwin and the Gnoll are just top 5. Draka is also pretty high on the list, and you could even consider things like Prep if you already have something like Edwin, let's say. Extortion still makes the cut, and if you already have Edwin, or even Gnoll, depending on the matchup, Shadow Step might make enough sense, so you can make some good value trades against an aggro druid, for instance. For Rogue, the best performers are obviously Miracle Rogues, but also Mine Rogue is just shy of 50%, and also in High Legend, actually Thief 40 Rogue is also doing well. But I guess you have to really be good at the game to actually pull this one off. On the number 2 spot, we have Ramp Druid this time, and this is again a 40 variant, like most of them. The Naga Giants are back in the deck, and you also have Battleground Battlemaster for some crazy wind fury action. You still have your Nafrius at the end, and you can double it up with your Bran. You don't need Keltos in this one, because with Wildcard Guff you're just gonna have plenty of mana to spare. And we also have one copy of Oracle of Loon, as well as Ivis. We also have two smuttering starfish to silence some nasty stuff, and we also have Jerry Rig so you can pull Nourish reliably. Matchup wise, not that much stats, but Imp Warlock as well as Aggro Druid are not gonna be great for you. For the Mulligan, here's a list with those in Kelp Keepers instead of the Wind Fury plus one silence, so you can have a better idea what the stats look like. Obviously, Guff is always gonna be great, as well as Jerry and Wild Growth. If you're expecting a slow matchup, Sire and Aphrius works. Innervate if you already have something to innervate into. Miracle Growth, I'm not really sure it's that amazing. 
and I would definitely prefer keeping Wild Bloom over Miracle Growth, and the rest might be situational. Keeping a 1 drop Dritter Reef also might make enough sense, but you don't really want to be playing it on turn 1, but you want to be keeping the flexibility so you can actually answer something most of the time. When on the coin, here's what it looks like, and again, Guff, Jerry, and Wild Bloom are pretty good. Sire again, depending on the matchup, Innervate and Wild Growth, and Miracle Growth maybe is a little bit more keepable now. For other good Druid decks, Aggro Druid is still doing pretty good, but everybody is trying to counter it, and also Enrage Warrior is back in town, so that might be a little bit of a problem for the deck. But I still believe it's a very, very good deck. Especially the Claw Fury variant. We also have other Ram Druid variants without the Giants, and that's about it for Druid. On the number 3 spot, we have Quest Hunter again, which is still doing pretty well. Again, this is a 40 variant, obviously, and there's really not much to talk about it. It's pretty much the same list like it used to be, with the Secret Package, as well as Spring the Trap, and we have Beast Stalker Tavish at the end, for which you gotta decide which quest reward you actually prefer to have at zero and be able to spam over and over again. You're running the good Wild Seed cards, and the rest the same old, same old. Matchup wise, Ram Druid is not gonna be great for you, and surprisingly, Aggro Druid is under 50, which is kinda weird, but I guess I get it. If the Aggro Druid is smart, they can definitely overwhelm all of your removal. Mech Paladin should be hard, but you shouldn't be able to find any of those, and the rest is great. Mulligan wise, going first and second, Dunbuldar Bunker is always gonna be great, Wild Seed could be pretty good, Beast Stalker Tavish depending on the matchup, Spring the Trap as well could be pretty solid if you're expecting free health minions from the opponent, Stack Charge as well, Arcane Shot I'd say. For Barrack Cotobane, I'm a little bit skeptical, but I guess card draw is not that bad, especially if you're curving into it. Also, Shell Shot might be good, and also Wound Prey. Going second, again Dumbledore is great, same as Beast Stalker Tavish most of the time, the Wild Seed cards, and your cheap damaging spells, including Spring Trap. With Hunter we also have 40 Beast Hunter doing pretty good right now, but with a pretty low sample size so I cannot reliably advise you to check it out. We also still have Face Hunter doing somewhat fine, but it's not what it used to be. On the number 4 spot we also have Quest Priest doing pretty well, and depending on how well you're piloting this deck you could be having some pretty good results. The deck is pretty versatile, and you can just keep on removing everything the opponent throws at you if there's some aggro deck, but you also obviously have your endgame plan with the quest reward, and you have a lot of disruption with Teotor as well as Mutinous. Identity Theft can be pretty good, and it can give you all sorts of good stuff, Sketchy Stranger helps you curve out easier, we're also running Switcheroo in this one so you can have easier way of drawing, and you have a ton of removal with Condemn, Light Monitor, Drake, Zarella, Clear the Scene, Light Bomb, Whirlpool, and so and so. Matchup wise, here's what a similar deck looks like, and Demon Hunters are not gonna be great, but you won't be seeing too many of those. Ram Druid can be pretty hard, as well as Quest Hunter. Boar Priest is too fast with their quest completion. Curse Warlock as well is gonna be a little bit annoying. But I do believe if you know what you're doing, you should have a better time doing this. And also Control, Shaman and Big Spell Major, not gonna be that hot. Mulligan wise, you basically wanna be curving out your quest. This is what it looks like when going first, and here's what it looks like when going second. Basically, depending on the matchup, you wanna decide which removals will be good for you in the early turns. For other good Priest decks, we have several iterations of Quest Priest. There's also Naga Priest doing pretty well. Boar Priest is just shy from 50%, and you can get that a lot higher if you know how to play the deck. And that's about it for Priest right now. And on the number 5 spot, we still have Big Spell Mage doing Big Spell things. The deck has only Teotor, and the locations as new cards in this one, and everything else is basically the same. And the list is exactly the same from the last top 5, so let's not talk about it too much. Matchup wise, here's what it looks like in the current meta. And Quest Hunter and Murloc Shaman are your only red matchups, which is very, very good for you. Mulligan Wise going first and second, Belinda is great, Deep Water, Evoker, your location, Far Watch Post and Mailbox Dancer, Amplified Snow Flurry, and even things like Barbaric Sorceress, and obviously Pelican Diver is gonna be neat as well. On the coin, again, your top two are gonna be Belinda and the location Pelican, Barbaric, Deep Water, Far Watch, basically same stuff. Silence and Akani can also help you out, and the rest are gonna be pretty situational. I guess Reckless Apprentice might make sense in some cases, but all in all, this is what it looks like. For other good mage decks, we also have Spooky Mage with the 40 variant with Denafrius at the end, but also Spooky Mage without Denafrius at the end, again as 40. There's also 30 variants for Spooky Mage, 
as well as for big spell mage, but the win rates are not as high. For the classes we didn't mention, with Demon Hunter, Aggro Demon Hunter is actually doing pretty well with 55% win rate, although the sample size is pretty small, and also Relic Demon Hunter has some working archetypes. Seems like the 30 health one works better with the Death Rattle package. For Paladin, we literally have nothing to show right now for the last 3 days. With Shaman, Evolve Shaman, which is basically Control Shaman without Snowfall Guardian, is doing pretty fine. With Warlock, Imp Warlock is the best performer right now, so it seems. And it looks like it's the faster classic variant with some curse action involved. The Denafrius variant is just under 51. And we also have Phylactery with 48, which is horrible. And for Warrior, for the last 3 days we don't really have any decks to show, but actually Enrage Warrior is doing pretty fine, so let's increase the margin to the last 7 days. And here are some variants of Enrage Warrior that are actually doing pretty fine. Some people are also running Control Warrior with good success in Top Legend, but I guess you have to be pretty good with the deck to make it work nowadays. So that's gonna be it for this Top 5 guys, hope this helps you figure out what you want to be playing till the new nerfs happen. Don't forget you can hire me for some Hearthstone coaching. Thanks for watching, I'm Chris05 and I'll see you in my next video or stream.